Hello, I'm Dr. Mike Miller, and I'm the Director of Microbiology Technical Services, which is a private consulting service for diagnostic laboratories around the country. I'm also retired from the Center for Disease Control after 35 years, and I've had a lifelong interest in specimen management and clinical relevance. Now there are a lot of references that are available for you in this regard and one has been produced by the American Society for Microbiology and there are many others that are available to you. So I want to welcome you to this most informative series of demonstrations of specimen collection for diagnostic microbiology. This is another specimen like wound where the label is often not helpful to the laboratorian interpreting the culture. A specimen labeled I tells us nothing other than the general anatomic site. Is this from conjunctivitis, from keratitis, a sty, a surgical specimen, perhaps vitreous? Always find out the true source so you can interpret culture results. For example, a coagulase negative staphylococcus from a conjunctival specimen may be commensal flora, but that same organism from blepharitis or vitreous can be critical. Ocular infection can be caused by bacteria, viruses, or chlamydia and can be detected by culture or nucleic acid amplification testing and each may require a special transport medium which further indicates the need for a suspect diagnosis. Infections may involve one or both eyes, so specimen and the auger plate should be marked as R, or right, or L, or left, to differentiate specimens. Conjunctivitis is the most common, and it's helpful to collect two swabs from the conjunctiva, one for culture and one for gram stain or other stains. If using e-swab, only one swab is necessary for both culture and gram stain. Bacterial cultures and viral cultures require different transport systems. Viral cultures should be submitted on ice or using a room temperature stable viral transport media such as UTM. Bacterial cultures should be submitted in a suitable bacteriological transport such as e-swab. Depending on the illness, one can collect swabs, corneal scrapings, biopsies, and anterior chamber or vitreous aspirates. This is the swab used to sample the conjunctiva. Note its size compared to a swab routinely used for sampling wounds and lesions. Because such a small amount of material is collected on conjunctival swabs, take care to sample firmly while rotating the swab over the infected area. Specimen collection should be performed by healthcare personnel who have completed training and demonstrated competency. Always read the manufacturer's package insert for specific instruction regarding specimen collection and transport for the type of test kit being used. Those who collect the specimen should always wear personal protective equipment, including a lab coat or scrubs, a mask, such as a surgical or N95 mask, eye protection, and gloves when collecting any specimen. Always remember to perform hand hygiene before and after the procedure. Explain to the patient what you are about to do. Now, let's watch how the conjunctival specimen is obtained. Open the swab package and remove the swab. Take care to sample firmly while rotating the swab over the infected area. Avoid touching the swab applicator below the molded breakpoint as this could lead to contamination and incorrect results. Gently remove the swab from the patient. Remove the screw cap from the tube and insert the swab into the transport container all the way to the bottom of the tube. 
holding the swab shaft close to the rim of the tube and keeping the tube away from the face, break the swab shaft at the pre-molded break point. Screw the cap on tightly to prevent leakage and dispose of the swab shaft in a regular trash receptacle. Apply patient identification label or write patient information on the tube label. Follow the standard operating procedures of transport and testing in your facility. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Generally, specimens should be transported at refrigerated or room temperature and arrive at the laboratory within two hours of collection. If not tested immediately, the specimen may be held at refrigerator or room temperature for 24 to 48 hours depending on the sample type. Refer to manufacturer's package insert for specific instructions. Please note that the eSwab liquid amies fluid maintains the viability of diverse bacteria. Do not send a dry swab as this will lead to unsatisfactory results. If the tube spills its contents prior to inserting the swab, the liquid is non-toxic. Simply put the swab into another tube before sending it to the laboratory and discard the spilled tube. If the tube spills after contamination, follow procedure for blood and body fluid cleanup. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction. If contaminated fluid splashes onto the person collecting the sample, treat as a blood and body fluid exposure. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction.